we're going to look closer at some of the more confusing points in using correct verb tense. This part is with present perfect and present perfect progressive. Look at these two sentences and find the verbs. What verb tenses are they? These two sentences have pretty much the same meaning. A lot of times present perfect and present perfect progressive have the same meaning and can both be used. Here are some other examples where the two sentences have about the same meaning. but sometimes only one of these verb tenses is correct. In the examples you just saw, there is only one correct verb tense for each sentence. In the first sentence, the present perfect is necessary because of this be verb. Be verbs are not usually used as main verbs in present perfect progressive. In the second sentence, you also have to use present perfect because of the word before. Before is a time signal that means this action is finished. So you can't use present perfect progressive. In the third sentence, present perfect progressive is used to emphasize that the action is still going on. When you see for some period of time, you'll know you should use present perfect progressive. Here are some of the signal words to tell you which verb tense you should use. There could be some exceptions, but in general, the words on the left will signal present perfect, and the expressions on the right will signal present perfect progressive. These are just some examples. You can probably think of some other words for these tenses.
Here we'll look at another difficult issue with verb tenses. In the examples you just saw, you should have used present perfect in the first sentence because it is talking about an action that was finished before that moment. We say that now is important in that sentence. In the second sentence, you needed simple past because the action happened at a specific time in the past, on Friday. Let's look at some more examples. The first sentence here uses present perfect. Your keyword is all week. This means that it has been happening in the past week and may continue to now. Because now is important in this sentence, we need present perfect, not simple past. In the second sentence, we use simple past because of the keyword yesterday. Remember, simple past is about an action that took place at a specific time in the past and is finished. In the third sentence, we use simple past again because we have this specific time, 3 o'clock. This action started and finished in the past at a specific time. On the next one, we use present perfect because we have the keyword five times so far. When you have one time or two times, that's a keyword. So far is also a keyword for present perfect because this means that this action has happened at some time in the past and may continue. It's also at a non-specific time, which is what present perfect is used for. In the last sentence, we also use present perfect. This is the negative. We use present perfect here because of the keyword since, since Friday or since yesterday, that's going to indicate present perfect. This means that the action may continue to now. So when now is important, if the action is related to something that happened before now, you will use present perfect. If the action happened in the past and it's finished, then you use simple past. Also again, if the time is not specific in the past, it's present perfect. If it's at a specific time in the past, it's simple past. Here are some of the key words to help you decide between simple past and present perfect. On the left, these are key words for present perfect. These words will help you see that the action was at a non-specific time in the past and may even continue to now. On the right, we have keywords for the simple past. These will indicate that the action happened at a specific time in the past. Try another exercise and be sure to look for keywords. Let me explain the answers in the exercise you just did. Try another exercise and be sure to look for keywords. Let me explain the answers in the exercise you just did. In the first sentence, we use simple past because this action
happened in the past and was finished in the past. And we have the key word an hour ago. In the second sentence, we use the present perfect. This is the negative. And we have the key word yet. But we also know this should be present perfect because this is something at a non-specific time in the past that may still continue to now. In the third sentence, we use present perfect because we have the keyword since. This is an action that happened in the past but continues to now. Keep in mind these keywords are just clues. Not every sentence has them. If there's no keyword, the speaker or writer has to decide if he's talking about an action that happened and finished at a specific time in the past or an action that happened at a non-specific time and may even continue to now. Hello everyone, I hope you're enjoying the class. I just wanted to remind you that the assignments called peer reviews are designed for you to interact with your classmates. So when you post a question, don't stop there. Look at your classmates' questions and try to help them with an answer. Even if you're not quite sure of the answer, having this conversation with them will help you all to learn. So don't be shy, go ahead and answer your classmates' questions. This lesson is on conjunctions and how to punctuate sentences that have conjunctions in them. First, you need to remember three types of sentences in English. A simple sentence. This lesson is on conjunctions and how to punctuate sentences that have conjunctions in them. First, you need to remember three types of sentences in English. A simple sentence just has one subject and verb and is called an independent clause. A compound sentence is made up of two simple sentences or two independent clauses. Those two independent clauses are joined together and one way to join them is with a conjunction like and and a comma. A complex sentence has one independent clause and one or more dependent clauses. Here are the conjunctions that we're talking about in this lesson. These are called coordinate conjunctions and there are seven of them. And, but, or, nor, yet, so, and for. Those conjunctions help us to connect things. In the first sentence here, Sam and Pete washed their faces. Sam and Pete is the subject, and they are connected with the conjunction and. In the next sentence, Sam washed his face, but not his hair. But is the conjunction, and this is joining face and hair. In the next sentence, the computer is old and broken. The conjunction and is joining the two adjectives, old and broken. In the next sentence, we will go to the park or the market. Or is the conjunction, and it's joining the two parts, the park and the market, both of which are nouns. In the last sentence, she bought apples, pears, and grapes. Here we have three nouns, and we are connecting them with the conjunction and. 
Notice in the first sentence, we had two nouns, Sam and Pete, and we had the conjunction and. We don't use a comma because there are only two nouns joined. In the last sentence, we have apples, pears, and grapes. Because we have three or more nouns, we do use commas between each one. And you should notice that all of these sentences are simple sentences. Simple sentences don't use a lot of commas. Now let's look at compound sentences. Here we're using conjunctions to join two sentences instead of two words. In the first sentence, Ben washed his face and he combed his hair. Our first sentence or independent clause is Ben washed his face. The other independent clause is he combed his hair. Both of those are simple sentences and they could stand alone by themselves. But we're joining them to make a compound sentence and we use the conjunction and. When we join two independent clauses with and, we must put a comma in front of and. Look at the next sentence. Again, we have two independent clauses. The first one, Jeff ate an apple. The other simple sentence is Alex ate a pizza. We're joining them with the conjunction but, so we must put a comma in front of but. The next one, the bank is closed is our first simple sentence. We can't cash the check is our other simple sentence. And here we're joining them with the conjunction so. Again, we put a comma before that conjunction. And finally, there was no air conditioning is the first sentence. We were cool is the second sentence. And we're joining these two sentences with the conjunction yet. So we put a comma in front of the conjunction. Here we have four compound sentences. And notice that they all have a conjunction with a comma in front. Here are some other examples. Each of these has two Notice that they all have a conjunction with a comma in front. Here are some other examples. Each of these has two sentences joined with a conjunction and a comma in front of the conjunction. One thing I want to point out, if you're wondering, how do I know if I have two sentences? After the conjunction, you should have a full sentence, a complete sentence. So we have Matt read a book. That is a complete sentence because Matt is the subject and read is the verb. That's why we need to put a comma in front of and. Look at the next one. After the conjunction, we have Julie rides a bike. If you're not sure if that's a complete sentence, take it by itself and find the subject and verb. Julie is the subject, rides is the verb. So that is a complete sentence. Because it's a complete sentence, we put that comma in front of but. And on the third one, after or, we have he will stay home. He is a subject, will stay is the verb. That is a complete sentence. So now I have to put that comma in front of or. And on the last sentence, I tried to bake a cake, yet I failed. What do we have after yet? We have the subject I and the verb failed. That's a sentence. It's very short, but it has a subject and a verb. So that is our second independent clause, and we need to put the comma in front of yet. Now, if I did not have a subject after the conjunction, I would not have a compound sentence, and I would not put a comma with the conjunction.
Look at these sentences and you'll understand. In the first one, James did his homework and Matt read a book. We already said this is a compound sentence, and that's why we have to put that comma in front of and. We knew it's a compound sentence because we had the subject Matt after the conjunction. But in the next sentence, James did his homework and read a book. After the conjunction and, do we have a subject? No, because it's the same subject as the beginning of the sentence, James. This and is just connecting two verbs. So this is not a compound sentence, and it does not use a comma. This is just a simple sentence with a compound verb. Look at the next pair. Amy walks to school, but Julie rides a bike. Again, we have the subject Julie after the conjunction, so we put the comma before but. That's a compound sentence. But in the next sentence, Amy walks to school but drives to work. This is not a compound sentence because it doesn't have two independent clauses. It only has one subject, Amy, and the two verbs, walks and drives. So do not put a comma in front of but in this sentence. And look at the last pair. Paul will go to a movie or he will stay home. After the conjunction or, we have the subject he. He will stay home is an independent clause, so we need to put the comma in front of or. In the last sentence, Paul will go to a movie or stay home. Do we have a subject after the conjunction? No, we don't. After or, we just have a verb, so this is not a compound sentence. Our subject is Paul, and the compound verb is will go or stay. And that makes a simple sentence, and we don't need to put a comma. Now check your understanding. Pause the video and decide if these sentences need to use a comma or not. Write them on your paper and put the comma in the correct place. Some of the sentences don't need any commas. Again, pause the video while you do this exercise. Check your answers now. You'll see the commas in red. Notice number one didn't use a comma because it just had a compound noun. It's a simple sentence with a compound noun. The second sentence used commas. It's a simple sentence, but remember, if we have a series of three items or more, we have to use commas. So we used them here. The third sentence does not use a comma. It does not have two sentences. If you look after and, there's no subject. Number four also doesn't use a comma. Because again, after but, there's no subject. This is another simple sentence with a compound verb. On the fifth sentence, there's still no comma. Because again, after the conjunction, there's no subject. There's no independent clause after that conjunction. This is just a simple sentence with a compound verb. 
The next sentence, we have a comma. We have the independent clause, the bus was late. And then after the conjunction, we have another independent clause. I decided to take a taxi to work. That's a complete sentence. It has a subject, I. So we do need to put a comma in front of the conjunction. The last two sentences also do not have commas. Did you get tricked on the last sentence? After the conjunction and, we had then. But then is not a subject. So you should not put a comma there. Let's review. Remember you don't use commas when you have only two nouns, or only two verbs, or only two adjectives. You do use commas when you have a series with three or more items. So that could be three nouns, or three adjectives, or five verbs. Then you would use a comma. You would put a comma after each item. And you do use a comma when you have two simple sentences. We can call them two independent clauses joined with a conjunction. That makes a compound sentence. And you do need a comma before the conjunction. Watch the video again or do some practice exercises.